What's up guys, I'm Steven. There's an unbelievably cool maker on YouTube by the name of Josh Sheldon, and he's super into making motion control rigs, which is pretty much just taking your camera and putting it on a robot so you can move it very specific ways and get awesome video from it. A couple years back, he made this whole light painting machine where he like integrated shots with animations that he made, and it's super cool. Go check out his channel. There's a link in the description if you wanna see what he's made. Anyway, his channel inspired me to make a motion control rig for my camera so I can get a whole bunch of glorious B-roll shots of all the things that I make for my YouTube channel. So I'm gonna make one. Now how on earth am I gonna make a robot that moves you around very specifically so that you see stuff in a cool way? How am I gonna do that? Well, Josh gave me a really good starting point and a couple ideas on how to do it, so let's break it down. First, we start with actually building the machine. I want the machine to be able to move in three axes. One, is the x-axis. I want it to be able to slide along one linear axis just to get some big broad movement. The next two, I'm calling U and V, and this is gonna take the camera and rotate it like this, and then like this. Ultimately, when you combine all of them together, you should be able to get the camera to do all kinds of cool motion control crapola. It's gonna be really cool. All kinds of funky shots and everything. It's gonna be great. This is what I like to make. Now, I hear you asking, Steven, how on earth are you gonna control all three of these axes exactly how you like? Well, well, let me tell you. A custom PCB. This board will have a microcontroller on it, really similar to an Arduino. It's just like what I used in the flamethrower and on the little plant, the cyberpunk plant thing, same kind of chip. And it's gonna have a really, really cool piece of firmware on it called the Gerbil, G-R-B-L, or Gerbil, or Garble, or people say all kinds of weird ways. I call it Gerbil. And Gerbil's super cool because it takes G-code, which is what you can also send to a 3D printer, and it takes that G-code and it decides how to control motors, which is exactly what I wanna do. I wanna be able to feed the circuit board something and then have it figure out how to move all my motors for me. Sick, but now we have a new problem. How do I make the G-code to send to the machine to move all my axes the way I want to? This is gonna be the tricky part. I'm going to write my own slicer for this machine. So just like when you're slicing apart to go to your 3D printer, it's taking some geometry and figuring out how to move all the motors to make your printer print it. I'm gonna make one of those, but instead of making all the axes move to print, it's gonna make all the axes move to shoot. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit and use an existing piece of software called Blender. Blender is the scariest piece of software I've ever seen. And not because it's bad or weird, but just because it's intimidating. It can do everything. You can make video games and edit video and do animations and rigging and all kinds of stuff and it's just this behemoth. So I'm gonna learn Blender and I'm gonna animate exactly how I want the camera to move and then I'm gonna write code in, oh, I should probably write it down. So when it's all said and done, I will have made an animation in Blender, written a script in Python that sucks out all the coordinate points during the animation and writes G-code using that. And then I take that G-code, I send it to my circuit board that's running Gerbil and then that circuit board controls all the axes. So, step one is building this gorgeous rig. Well, I hope it will be gorgeous. You'll see by the end of this video. I need to find a way to mechanically move my camera, whoosh, hopefully about a meter along the x-axis, and then I'd love like 180 to 360 degrees rotation in the U, around like this, and then maybe 180 degrees along the V, like this. And then once I've built the whole mechanical part, I'll make the PCB, put Gerbil on it, figure out the blender stuff, and put the whole rest of the thing together. Get all the brains working. The brains! But in the meantime, let's print a lot of parts. Feel like 
that when I print parts that I design in CAD, they feel so much smaller in CAD and when I print them out, they're, they're so big. This is huge. So I'm getting most of it together at this point and there's a couple things that I'm, uh, maybe I would have done differently if I could do it again. A lot of the gear interfaces that I have, I gave myself no ability to adjust them. So I kind of just like had to make sure I got it right in CAD and of course I didn't get it right in CAD. So I ended up doing kind of a lot of shimming with washers and nuts and stuff like that. What would have been great is if I put some kind of like flexure thing that would kind of hold the gears together and that would make sure it's always pressing against it. So what I ended up doing was just kind of making sure that the gears were a little too much and then I've just been spinning them around for the past 10 minutes. <laughs> and there's a whole bunch of like printed part powder that's kind of grinding itself off so it gets a smooth interface. Whoops. And I don't need like micron precision on this thing. I just need to generally move my camera about where I want it. So getting that unbelievable precision isn't super necessary. And I think I'll actually get some pretty good precision with this thing, but we'll see once I get all the motors and stuff hooked up. <laughs> I'm really excited to hang this thing upside down and then have my camera like, like zip lining across my workshop, taking all kinds of cool shots. That's gonna be cool. <laughs> That's gonna be so cool. Another thing I messed up, the camera's center of gravity is really, really low in this, the V axis. So rotating like this. So it's like clearly not in line with the center point. And that means this motor is gonna have to work a ton harder to like hike it all the way around. If it's in the center, it's just kind of like, like rotating a chicken on a spit kind of thing. But if it's super off axis, you have to lift it all the way up. So the last thing is getting this thing sliding along the x-axis on that nice piece of aluminum extrusion and all the mechanical stuff is done. That's it. Oh my gosh. Sick. This thing is so freaking cool. Oh man. So there it is. This is all the mechanic stuff, all totally finished. <clears throat> so the next step is designing a circuit board to control this whole thing and then putting Gerbil on it so it can interpret G code to figure out how to actually move all these axes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you wanna see more stuff like this and I'll see you next time. The brains!